a second. Facebook. All right. Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about the idea, uh, the concept, the phrase that adversity always makes us stronger. Okay. Or kind of the idea that we can always take whatever we've been through. We can always take our challenges and we can mine them for something of value. We can use them in a way that will help us become more of who we are and more of what we were capable of becoming. And even speaking to the idea that it is through adversity that we become who we are supposed to become. And that if we don't face the adversity in our lives that we face, and that if we didn't get traumatized the way we got traumatized, or if we didn't get hurt the way we got hurt or whatever, that we never would have been able to grow into who we are, right? So this idea that it is adversity that makes us who we are, that gives us the capacity to grow into what we ultimately have the potential to become. And if we didn't face that uh, adversity, that we'd never grow into who we were supposed to be. And, and then again, the idea that all of us, that every single one of us, every person on the planet who is facing adversity has some way, has some method, there, there is something that they can do to turn that adversity into something that makes them stronger and better and more aligned with their purpose. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. So I really want to, again, speak to this in a more broad and general kind of global sense. And then I will speak to it more in terms of kind of the context of what I think most people who are going to be listening to this video are experiencing in their lives. And the, like I say, the contextual, the contextual experience of a person who has a relative amount of access, a relative amount of social security safety nets around them to some degree. Um, and like I say, just the, we're not going to be talking about people who are in like true abject poverty or in situations where they don't have access to even the most basic of resources because I don't believe that that's necessarily going to be helpful for anybody watching these videos. We will talk about this in the context of having a, like I say, a kind of a baseline of a, of a life where we do have access to things and, and being honest about that reality and what we can do with that. So, like I say, first things first, when we go global, and, and, and okay, before I even get into this, I do want to state that again, for a lot of us, the pain of what we're going through and the pain of what we have been through, for a lot of us, the only way we got through that pain and the only way we're getting through that pain and the only way that we can continue to get ourselves to put one foot in front of the other every single day when life is very hard and when we don't know what we're doing and we feel lost and we feel confused and we feel like life is just full of struggle and we are really wanting to become something great, we are really wanting to experience something pleasurable in our lives, we are really wanting to see that there is hope, that of course we are going to hold on to this idea that the adversity is making us stronger, that we would not be who we are supposed to be if we weren't going through it, and that there's always some way of turning our adversity into something that's going to make us stronger, that there's always some way of healing, that there's always some way of, of integrating, there's always some way of evolving through it, there's always some way of taking what we've been through and not losing ourselves, and not losing a potential, and not losing something. Because again, when we're in that deep pain and when we're in that struggle and we, we're not really sure how we're gonna get through it or even kind of if we're gonna get through it, that hope, that feeling, that idea that of course this is going to be something, that this is just the part of the story where I go through the hard thing and then eventually it turns into the part of the story where I see the whole purpose of the whole thing that I went through and it turns me into something that I never would have been and that there, there is goodness in this. 
And I don't want to take that away from anybody. I don't want anyone who's watching this to feel like what I'm going to say in this video means that that might not be true for you and that that might not be true in general and that I'm like kind of like dumping a bucket of cold water on that whole thing because again I, I really do think that generally speaking for most people who are watching this content like if you're here watching this content it is very likely that you are going to be able to integrate your trauma, that you are going to be able to turn it into something good if you really want to, that you are going to be able to face your adversity and come out the other side stronger and, and, and have a good life. I do believe that, like I say, for most people watching this content, that is the reality. And so I'm going to speak to that more later on in the video and I don't want what I'm about to say to feel like I'm canceling that out because I'm not, okay? This is very contextual and I feel like, again, with absolutely everything, especially in our spirituality world, there's complexity and nuance to all of these things. And as much as we want a cut and dry, this is how it always is, this is the answer, this is so that we have a feeling of hope and so that we have that feeling of knowing what's going to happen, that's not how life works, okay? So I, I the reason that I want to speak to an experience that I don't think anyone who's, or very few people who are watching this are actually having, the experience of the adversity that you're going through really not being something that you're going to heal from and being something that is absolutely robbing you of your potential, the way that I want, the reason I want to speak to that is because I feel like it's important for us as a humanity to look at these things and adjust the way we're doing things. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to speak to that and that's why I'm going to speak to it in the way that I'm going to speak to it. But again, for everybody watching, for everyone who's feeling like the, the thing that's getting you through your life right now is feeling like this, this story that adversity makes us stronger and that there's always something we can do about our adversity to make it better and that we can we can heal from anything and that we can get stronger from anything I don't want to take that story away from you and I'm not taking that story away from you okay so just to preface what I'm about to say with if you're watching this and that's the thing that's getting you through your life hold on to that okay that was my story and it was true for me and I'm gonna, like I say, speak to it a little bit more in the later part of the video, so I'm not taking that away from you, okay? Now, from a universal, global, hum humanity perspective, I do believe it's important that we are realistic, that absolutely we cannot say that all adversity makes every human being on the planet who's experiencing adversity stronger, that it makes them better, or that it's even something that can be recovered from, okay? There are very real realities of people who are born into abject poverty, who are never gonna have the basic resources that they need to live even a, a, a marginally good life, to live a life that's not just suffering and pain. And in that, they are never going to find their potential, what they would have been able to become had they been in an environment where they were supported in any way. There are going to be people who are traumatized to a degree, who are abused to a degree, who are injured in some way to a degree that they will not recover from it. And that can be, again, like repeated abuse in childhood that fundamentally alters the way that your brain and your nervous system functions. It can be illness, like literal physical illness that the body can't recover from, that that is an absolute re reality that we, we aren't ever going to reach the potential we could have reached had we not gotten sick, had we not gotten injured, had we been cared for in our sickness and our injury in some way. There are going to be traumatic experiences that some of us go through that and again, right, and we're never going to have access to the resources. Like maybe we could have healed it or we could have transformed it in some way, but the, the resources for how to actually do that were out of our reach and we were never going to have that. It could be that, again, people born into countries in the world where they have a dictatorship as the ruler and there are simply just not opportunities for huge groups of people to be educated, to be 
that, that they're not invited into places, into society where they could blossom and explore and express themselves to these higher degrees where they're they live in a, in a situation where they're constantly under the threat of war and terror and watching the people that they love get get very deeply injured or killed like these things are a reality and they absolutely in a lot of ways steal a lifetime from somebody right like um there are children who die every single day, and they never absolutely, they absolutely never got to reach their potential. And the reason that I want to talk about this is because, again, in nature, in reality, as hard as this is to accept sometimes, number one, in real nature, in real reality, even if humans weren't intervening in any in any way, right? Nature dies. There are plenty of animals that get a bacteria and that bacteria destroys them. They get a fungus, they get a plants get a fungus and then that's it. They don't that's it. They didn't get to be there. They didn't get to bloom. They didn't get to become the tree. They didn't get to grow. There are pathogens. There are parasites, there are viruses, there are bacteria that take things out, that take entire crops out. There are animals that absolutely manipulate there are predatory animals <laughs> that manipulate other animals and destroy their sense of uh, their life, that take their life early, that eat each other. They, like, in, there's weather, there's chaos in reality that robs life of its potential on a regular basis every single minute of every single day. So even if there was no human intervention at all, to say that we all have the capacity to become what we're going to become and that all adversity is something we can overcome and something that we can use to our benefit is not how reality works. Yes, there are things that just destroy things before they ever had the chance to express and grow and become what they were going to become. So that's like the natural world. And then on top of that, as humans, we have the capacity now and always have because of the way that humans are not all created equal. We don't have um, a homogenous, all of us having the same capacity. We have not developed um, methods of society where absolutely everything is equally valued and anyone who just grows into whatever it is that they are, like, where, right, where there's equal opportunity for absolutely all of us to grow into what we want to become, and then growing into that thing that we naturally are is then equally valued among all other things. And so all of us could work hard and become what we're supposed to become, and that that's going to be valued by society in exchange for resources, and then we can live a great life. That is also not reality. There are, there are nature-made ad adversities that will never be overcome by the thing that it, overcome, uh, the thing that it overtakes. And there are man-made adversities where, again, we aren't going to be able to recover from some of the things that we are exposed to. Slavery, <laughs> child, child abuse, sexual abuse when we're very, very young or just at all. Like, there, like I say, dictatorial governments, war, poverty, these, again, systemic systems where groups of people have less access and less resources because of the way society is set up. There are so many reasons that people have, have historically been born into a life where they were never going to reach their potential because of the way their life was, because of the way life was set up, and currently. Right? There are still people who are born to countries where, like I say, because of the rulership, because of the climate, because of the systems, because of the lack of technology, because of the lack of resources, because of the lack of access, they are never going to have the capacity to grow into what they genetically had the potential to become. And the, for our purposes, acknowledging that, I believe the reason it's important for us to acknowledge that is because we are intelligent human beings who have the capacity to continue to work towards a world where more and more people do have access, 
right? Like we are developing technologies, we are developing understanding, we are start, we are understanding how weather works. Where we have created so many things that have given us the capacity to survive and even thrive regardless of what's going on in the natural world. And we've learned so many things about our psychology and about our biology and about our spirituality and what it takes to help someone reach their potential and what it takes to heal from trauma and what it takes and, and the, the resources and all these things that are required. And I believe that what we need to understand is that as a humanity, if we really want to make this idea that our adversity is always something we can overcome and there's always something positive we can do with it, if we want to work towards that being more and more and more of a reality, which again, I don't know that we're ever going to reach a point where that's always reality, right? There are still going to be people who are born with physical, mental, emotional disabilities that they're not going to heal from. There are still going to be traumatic accidents that we can't do anything about. There are still going to be natural things that happen that take some people out or that really seriously damage some people. There are still going to be humans fucking up and hurting each other and being irresponsible and overpowering each other because that is always going to exist. There's always going to be a power imbalance because we are not created equal. But we as a humanity can decide that we value giving more and more and more people the capacity to reach their potential. And then understanding that the way that we move towards that is be, be, by creating a more equitable world, by creating a more equitable society. And so like I say, if, if we really value this idea that adversity can always make us stronger, that we can always find a way to take what we've been through and that we can turn it into something good. If we value that idea and we, we want that idea to be true for all of us, then we have work to do a around creating access to things. Because, and again, I, and I always think that there might always be people who don't access their potential because they, they choose not to, because the whatever they went through, they just didn't have it inside of them to, tr to try to heal. And they didn't, even if they had access to the resources, right? Like we can't make someone go after their potential. We can't make some, we can't inspire someone to do that hard work of what it takes to reach your genetic potential. We can't make somebody do that. But as a society, like I say, we can set it up in a way where people have the resources and people have access and, and the opportunity that if they want to, they can. So this is what I think is important to acknowledge about the reality of this complex life that we live, that we aren't ever going to have complete control. And I think that we are always going to be at risk of losing some people too soon and losing people before they've been able to reach their potential. Or like I say, people facing adversity and damage and getting hurt in a way where they can't recover from it for some reason or other. And that is a reality that we have to face as a humanity. And I, I would hope that our spiritual practices and our spiritual ways of being and our, our self-love and these tools and speaking with spiritual people or whatever it is that we do um, is helping us to digest and, and reckon with and learn to navigate the tough stuff of life. Right, where, where we don't want to be in denial. We don't want to be telling ourselves a story about life that isn't true and telling ourselves that literally anyone could be awesome and that, and that if whatever, they were born into poverty or if they were born into whatever, that that's just what their soul was capable of or that that's what they deserved or that there wasn't anything more to them. Like, I, I don't believe that. And, and I think, again, if we can be a little bit more honest in our spirituality, it would be like, this is part of life that we, we might need to learn to embrace and navigate. And then, like I say, see where our power as a humanity, as a global humanity is within that. Like, how can we make these things more accessible? How can we work towards a more equitable world, a more equitable country, a more equitable community, 
where we as a humanity start to understand that the more we cooperate with each other, the more we share our resources, the more we, we move towards true community instead of believing this idea that, that ultra-independence is the thing that gives us freedom and believing in this idea that the more we shore up for ourselves, the safer we are and, and this idea that it should be every man for himself. Or, and even some of us believing this idea that like, you should have to struggle and you should have to not be helped and and right like a lot of some of us can feel like well I had to do it all on my own so kind of fucking fuck the world and that's what made me strong so like I'm not gonna try and help anyone else and, and we can have these ideas and it's like how how much is that working for us is that really the world we want to live in where life is hard enough. <laughs> like literally, life in and of itself is hard enough. Life is scary enough. Life is filled with adversity enough that do we really need to be making it worse by being in competition with each other and, and resisting being in community and, and not looking to understand each other and not looking to create more access for all of us and, and looking to shore up for ourselves. Because a lot of the times, again, what we're trying to protect ourselves from when we're shoring up for ourselves. We're trying to protect ourselves from death and sickness and all of these things, which we can't protect ourselves from that, like in the grand sense of things. And, and we're trying to protect ourselves from each other, which again, if we lived in a more equitable society, if we lived in a society where we were based on community and sharing and, and looking to support the community we wouldn't have to protect ourselves from each other. Like that, that's kind of the, the snake eating its tail. The continuing to build these fences, like literal fences around our houses and fences around our countries and fences around our borders and all of these things. At this point, with the technologies that we have and with the capacities we have to create a society, like we have g billionaires, so at this point, there isn't lack of resource. There isn't lack of technology for distributing resource. So much of the fear we have of one another is political and it's engineered and it's causing us to think we need to continue to protect ourselves from a thing that if we just shared and if we were a little bit more, like I say, community minded and even globally community minded than individually minded, we wouldn't need to shore up for ourselves so much. We wouldn't need to think that the way to happiness is lavish abundance because we'd be more connected and we'd have more actual real human connection and earth connection and all these things that actually satisfy us. We wouldn't be so hungry girls, like it would change a lot of things. So. It, this isn't about idealism, this is literally just about like the practicalities of if we made life a little bit more resourced for more people on the planet, there would be less war and there would be less fear and there would be less government control and there would be less all of these things because we'd be a humanity that's a little bit more centered and grounded and less in trauma and less in our fear brain and that would be good for all of us. So I'm just going to put that out there. So if we really want to move towards a world where we can really say, like, we all believe that adversity can always be overcome and that it can always be something that makes us stronger, we need to work towards that. We need to actually create that reality. Because I do think we could create it. I think we could create it a lot closer than we actually have right now, where so many people are born into situations where they're never going to reach their potential and it has nothing to do with them and their choices. It's the way the world is set up right now, they are not gonna have the opportunity. And so that's on us. If we really wanna believe in this as a global concept, I think then we have to say, okay, well, what are we gonna do so that we can make that a thing? Because if we want it to be a thing, I think we can work towards it. But right now it is not a thing. So that's, that's the global perspective. Now let's talk the individual perspective. Does adversity always make us stronger? Talking in the context of, like I say, most people who are watching these videos. The people where you've got an internet connection, you've got a computer, you've got a phone, and this usually says something about the rest of your life. 
that there that there's some mm, right you're not in the you're not in complete abject poverty you have access to some resources you have access to this information about mental health and and spiritual health and physical health and you have access to some level at least of pseudo safety in some areas and that you have some agency in your life okay so like again we're not talking now to absolutely everyone on the planet because this what I'm about to say doesn't apply to absolutely everybody on the planet and I think it's really important that we talk about things in context this is going to apply to a lot of the people watching um, but like I say I don't believe it applies to absolutely everyone on the planet because that's not reality so to the people who are generally a part of this audience and who are watching these videos how much we are able to take our adversity and turn it into something and use it to make us stronger and use it as as something that that like I say makes us stronger helps us reach our potential that we can turn that adversity into something positive I think for a lot of us that's absolutely possible okay I think for most people watching this it's probably possible and I want to just talk a little bit about my story because just as an example <laughs> of some person who didn't have everything but didn't have nothing <laughs> and and that I had some adversity and this is kind of how I walked through it okay so again I was born chronically ill and I'm still continuing to figure out how badly ill I was slash am and so born chronically ill in a time when we had no awareness of literally any of the things that were going on with me I was autistic had no idea that that was a thing I was born in a religion that really heavily traumatized me I was born into a family where my my caregivers literally just were not prepared and they were very traumatized themselves from their incredibly traumatic upbringings and I was born into a financial situation that again I was very very middle class which in this in the current society kind of like doesn't really exist anymore so I probably would have been like lower middle class and so I had a lot of things working against me in the in that in that I was physically sick I was emotionally incredibly sensitive and that was not understood in my family and in fact it was something that I was told made me terrible it was the reason my mother was so upset all the time and my sister was so upset all the time and my father was so upset all the time that like it was me not ever being able to be okay I was always sick I was always crying I was always overstimulated and all these things and why couldn't I just get along and do all these things and then like I say and then I go to church and I'm told that literally all of the pain on the planet is my fault because of my sin and it is my job to save everybody like th those were the words that were spoken and turns out when you're autistic you take things a lot more literally than most people do <laughs> so I took it literally I literally literally 100% literally believed that it was my job to save everyone that it was my fault that I was irreparably sinful that I was irreparably damaged that my body was sinful my mind was sinful my entire being was sinful and the only redeeming thing there was about me was the capacity to help and save other people right like that was my foundational view of myself and then like I say I was in chronic pain so I have never once in my entire life eaten a meal up to this point even right now today that did not make me sick in some way I have never once eaten food and not gotten uncomfortable or a stomach ache to some degree my pain is way 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 less and far more manageable now than it ever has been but that's pretty traumatizing when the thing that you need to live causes you pain every single time and then being sick didn't equal love and compassion and and embrace from my caregivers it didn't equal being taken care of it didn't no it equaled getting yelled at it equaled getting ignored it equaled now I have all this work I have to do like I didn't get to not 
go to work. I didn't get to not go to school. I didn't get to not do anything. It was just now I can't do it right now, so now I'm going to have to do double tomorrow. And I made everyone around me upset, and there's no answers for this. And there was even, like, right, you're faking it. Like, you're just weak. You're just tired. You're just, come on, get on with it. And then... I was, like I say, hypersensitive. I could feel everyone's emotions around me. I could feel what everyone was going through, but no one was being honest and no one was saying what they were thinking or feeling. And so it was like constantly making me feel like I was crazy. Um, so there was all that. And then, yeah, money wasn't really a thing in my family. Like it just, there wasn't money for extracurricular or like well I got to do extracurricular activities I definitely I got to dance and I got to do all those things and so that was really great and that was super I'm super super grateful for that and there was that but after high school essentially I didn't get to go to university um, there was there was no money for anything it was basically I graduated I had saved a bunch of money through working all through junior high and high school I worked the whole time and I saved my own money and I got my diploma in nutrition and I went out into the world and that was that. I didn't believe that I could ask my parents for money because they told me there was no money to give me. So there was nothing like that. I was horrified to go into debt, so I refused to do that. And so, yeah, like I wasn't able to get educated in the way that most people could to like climb their way into like an actually good paying job. I wasn't, I didn't, it was just yeah, I was, and like I say, I was physically ill. I had all these things going on. I was like, and severely traumatized, like pretty severely mentally and emotionally traumatized. And, and probably one of the most self-loathing human beings on the planet. Like I just hated everything about myself um, and was deeply codependent with everyone that I was involved with. Because again, I thought that the only good thing about me was what I did for other people. I was there to serve. And if I wasn't serving in some way, I felt like I was just, should die and that was it so for me being in that amount of pain all the time mental emotional and physical pain all through growing up I had this hope that I was going to be able to make a better life for myself and I don't know where that came from and I don't know how I even like I didn't really even for a very long time have a concept of what that would be like I thought getting married like I was gonna like find a man who was gonna love me and then that was gonna change everything for some reason I really truly believed in like I literally prayed every single night that my body would just spontaneously heal I literally just thought I would I would have a spontaneous healing <laughs> and and all through being Christian I just I believed that my body was just gonna heal itself and that life was gonna just magically transform um, that I was gonna find friends that liked me because I never had that that I was gonna find some sort of community like I had these hopes and dreams that if I just moved or if I just tried hard enough or if I just did something life would change and and that that idea that there could be something better in life that I could take because so again right the the Christian narrative and even just the like hero's journey whatever I believed that I was going to be able to take what I had been through and turn it into something good and I will share that all through growing up in the church in the Christian church I was constantly being prophesied over that I was going to become great. That's this was all going to be for something, and right, like all the stories in the Bible, all the hero stories that were taught. Like there's this huge narrative in our culture of the the zero to hero, the the person going through the worst thing and coming out the other side and it being awesome, and and I just like everyone else, I think just like most of us being the main character in my own story, right? Took on this idea that this was all gonna be for something and there, that there was this magical narrative to my life that, that I was being guided and I was being supported and that God loved me and that I was special and that this was going to be something. And, and again, right, like part of that came from the church, part of that came from TV shows and movies and, and this, this idea that we're all handed. And, and it absolutely was so important for me in not giving up 
to believe that, to believe that there was going to be something good about what I was going through. So that's why I want to say for anyone who's struggling and anyone who's having a hard time and, and really struggling, it is absolutely possible that you can turn what you have been through into something good. It is absolutely possible that you can make your life better. It is absolutely possible that the adversity that you have been through will become a part of your gift. And what I would rather say than I promise you that's going to happen and that is how it is for everybody and this is just how it is and, and all this stuff, what I would rather say in a more realistic way is number one, okay, number one, your life matters, period, end of story. I want you to understand that even if you never heal, even if you never turn your adversity into something good, into something that helps other people, or if you never get out of this darkness or whatever, your life still matters. Your story still matters. Your arc still matters. And you are still a worthy, fully worthy, fully lovable, fully respectable human being right here, right now. Because again, some of us aren't ever going to fully recover, aren't ever going to fully heal from what we've been through. Some of us have been damaged in a way that I believe is irreparable. Some of us are going to experience a trauma that we're not going to be able to heal. And I don't say that in a way of trying to be discouraging. Because if you're watching this and you're thinking, is that me? Am I the person who isn't going to heal? Am I too damaged or whatever? Just the main reason that I'm saying this is because I don't want anyone to walk away from this call feeling like if they don't transcend and unless and until they transcend and unless and until they reach some healed place, they're not worthy of love, of feeling respected, of feeling good enough, of feeling like you did good enough right here, right now. Okay, so that's my fundamental message. It doesn't matter if you transcend or not. It doesn't matter if you take your, your adversity and make it into something stronger or not. It, it doesn't matter. You are worthy of love and respect and feeling like you are good enough and feeling like your life story matters and feeling like your existence matters now. Right here. In this moment. No matter what, what you're going to go through, you are not damaged goods. You are not wait until you're better and then you're worthy of love you there you're not you're before I want you to understand that you're worthy of love right now you're worthy of respect right now you're worthy of again the tools of self-love that I teach compassion for who and what you are right here right now and curiosity about just what this version of you needs right here, right now, that you have access to in real reality. You are worthy of compassion and curiosity and getting your needs met for the person you are right now. Right here, right now. And to me, in my experience, what we are capable of healing, what we are capable of transcending, what we are capable of taking that is our pain and our struggle and the adversity we have been through and turning it into something good, what we are capable of transcending, what we are capable, the goodness we are capable of creating in our lives will come from that. Just showing up for the you that exists right here, right now, asking yourself what you need and assuming innocence in yourself, compassion and curiosity. So again, if you're worried, if you're sitting there saying, am I the one who's too damaged? Am I the one who isn't gonna reach my potential? Has it been too bad? Is it too late? Do I not have access to what I need? I'm gonna speak to that in a moment. But ultimately, what I would say to everyone <laughs> is assume that you are one of the ones who is gonna be able to be okay. Live like that is the truth. Live like it is the truth that you are going to be able 
to turn what you have been through into something good. And then start showing up for yourself with curiosity and compassion in every single moment and just living that out every single day. Because regardless of what the reality ultimately is going to be about your potential and how much you can or cannot heal, you're going to discover that simply, not easily, simply through continuing to show up for who and what you are right now, what needs to be done in this moment, what is possible for you to do in this moment, over and over and over again. Being compassionate with yourself, getting to know yourself a little bit more every single day by assuming innocence so you can take down those walls of defenses, discover who and what you really are to the degree that you are capable of doing that right now, and then meeting your needs to the degree that you are capable of meeting them right now. And to the, like I say, how much you're able to improve your life within that, how much you can make your circumstances better, how much power you have over time will be discovered through that method. So assume you are going to be able to take your adversity and, and make it something good. Assume you are in that category. Assume that is true for you. And then start to assume that you are worthy of love and compassion and understanding and resources and connection now and continue to show up for yourself, for the you that exists right here, right now, one moment at a time. Because that's how you're going to get there. So for me, right, like what, what got me through for a very, very, very long time was believing that if I got through what I was going through, because for a long time, I didn't necessarily believe that happiness for myself existed. Like, I wasn't doing it for that. I wasn't living as though I was going to necessarily have a better life for myself, for myself. That didn't motivate me because I didn't love myself enough. Like, I literally, like I said, had such poor self-esteem that the idea that I could be happy and that life could be good for me simply for me didn't matter. I was like, who, who does that help? <laughs> who cares? And in fact, in a lot of ways, I was like, well, that would be worse. Because if my life is good and everything is good for me, and I didn't save everyone else on the way, I'm making it worse. So for me, for a very long time, the only thing that motivated me to continue going and looking for how to heal and looking to make my own life better in some way was the idea that what I went through was going to make something better for someone else. That if I could do it and if I could figure it out, like that was always my whole thing. Uh, very autistic of me, I think. The, if I could figure this out, if I could figure out the formula, if I could figure out what was happening, why it was happening, how to fix it, and then write it down in a book or put it in a video or do something in this way, if I could make it better, if I could understand it, make it better, heal it for myself, that I would be able to then turn around and give that to other people. Because again, like this idea of like saving everyone and helping everyone, the, once I became not Christian anymore, I couldn't just say the prayer of Jesus Christ and get everyone to accept Jesus into their heart. So I needed a new thing of like, well, how was I going to keep saving everybody? Right? Like that was my psychology. And so for me, it was, if I could figure this out for myself, I'll be able to figure it out for everyone else. And I'll be able to give it to everyone else. And <laughs> that's my career and that's why you see that I'm here now that for a very long time like I said this idea that my adversity was going to make me stronger and that I was going to recover from it and that I was going to turn around and fix everyone else or give it to everyone else was the thing that got me through okay so again if if the idea that you're going to be able to get to a better life feels good to you hold on to that don't let yourself lose that hope and honestly, don't let the world tell you that you can't have it. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't have it. Don't let anyone tell you that you are not going to be able to recover. I've had many things in my life where people told me, you're not going to recover from this. You're going to struggle with this for the rest of your life. That this will always be an issue for you. And that's not true for me. I didn't accept that. Okay? So... This idea, again, of how can we tell if the adversity that we have been through is the kind that we can heal from and that we can make into something positive 
and that we can turn into something good? How can we tell if that's the kind of adversity we've been through or if we're the kind of person that's damaged beyond repair? Step number one, r truth number one, you're not gonna know until you're dead. As hard as that might be to accept, the are we going to be able to take our trauma, to take our adversity, to take what we've been through and turn it into something good? Are we going to be able to ultimately heal? Are we going to be able to ultimately get, get over it, integrate it, whatever it is that we think is going to happen? Either we're not going to know until it happens, right? We, we work, we do the things, we, we heal, we, we try, we do all the things that we know to do, the loving ourselves, the embracing ourselves, the meeting our own needs, the meeting our needs the best we can, the taking on whatever resources become available to us to help us with that. We do that and we do that and we do that and then we either get there or we die trying. And what I decide, so this is what I'm just gonna say. For myself, right, when I was being told, you're never gonna heal from this. This isn't possible. This adversity is too much. I've had therapists break down in tears when I tell them what I've been through. It completely, I think, probably inappropriately, I don't know. And when these things happen to me, what I have always done for myself, that I'm just gonna say, if this resonates for you, take this tool, is I have always said to myself, I am going to assume that it is possible that I can heal. I am going to assume that there is an answer. I am going to assume that I can turn this into something good. Simply because I want to live my life as though that is true and because I know that the way that our psychology works, that when we are expecting to be able to find something, if it exists, we will probably find it. If we are expecting that we're not going to be able to find something, if it exists, we probably won't find it. Because that's how our psychology works. When, when we identify with something, when we own something as a truth for ourselves, we are far more likely to continue to pursue it to its end. We are far more likely to not get discouraged and give up on our path. We are far more likely to find it if it does exist than if we don't identify with something, if we're working from a skeptic's point of view, if we're convinced that we're not gonna find it. I, I would never want to sit here and tell someone you can't have it because the second we identify with that, it, it really can knock us off a path where we could have done it. And so, like I say, for a lot of us, until we get there or until we die, we're not going to know if we're going to be able to heal. But for me, like I said, living as though it's possible, living as though every time I hit a roadblock, every time something that I tried didn't work to make me better, made it worse, Every time I discovered a new layer of trauma in myself I didn't even know existed. Every time there was a setback. Because I so strongly identified as someone who was going to heal and someone who was going to figure it out and someone who was going to make this world a better place because of it, I kept going. Okay? So that's my first step, my first offering, if this resonates for you live as though it's possible. Identify as being one of the ones who is going to heal. Make that your self-identity because again, if it's true, you are far more likely to get there when you identify with that. And if it's not true, your experience, and I know, right, I'm the kind of person that I, I talk so much about being in alignment with reality and accepting reality and be in true reality. And if you're the person who isn't going to heal and isn't going to transcend and isn't going to transform because of your um, whatever you've been through, I, it, I'm basically telling you to live in illusion. And that might seem really contradictory to what I usually teach. But like I say, 
I don't know that any of us are ever going to be able to know for a fact that we can't until we're dead. So I don't really consider it living in a delusion. If you're ultimately going to end up not being able to heal and transform and transcend the way that you wanted to, to believe that you are. That's giving yourself the benefit of the, of the doubt within a reality that you're not going to be able to know until you get there. Right? This isn't one of those reality things where we're fighting against a reality that's right in front of our faces and it's really affecting us in a negative way. This is like what happens after death. We don't know. And we're not going to know until it happens. So, for everyone watching this, I want you all to identify as someone who's going to heal. But, at the same time, I really want all of us to also work on really anchoring in the idea that our lives matter right here, right now. That's why I started with that. That it's not you only matter and you're only lovable and you're only good enough and you're only worthy of love and joy and happiness in your experience when you're done and you're transcended and you're healed. Because a lot of us, especially a, a lot of us who are traumatized and who are hurting a lot right now, so I totally validate this, and I've been there and I am there sometimes. When I'm in a lot of pain, in the times in the past where I've been in a lot of pain, where it's been like literally there's no money, I'm sick, I have to go to work. I have to go to work today, I have to go to work tomorrow, I have to go to work the next day because the bills have to get paid, there is no safety net, there's no asking anyone for money, there's no not paying the rent. My two choices are stay home and be sick and then get kicked out of my apartment or go to work sick and hate every minute of it, come home and do all the chores and that's how I'm going to live. I've been there. I know what it's like to some degree. I'm not saying I suffered the worst thing that anyone's ever suffered. That's absolutely not true. Most people, lots of people have had it way, 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 way worse than me. But I do know what it's like to suffer. I do know what it's like to be in pain and, and to need that hope, to really need that hope. And I know what it's like to feel like I'm not going to be able to be happy or feel any kind of joy or feel any kind of goodness in my life until I'm healed. And that's why I wanted to say the tool of self-love, of showing up for yourself for who and what you are right now, even in the pain you're in right now, even in the struggle you're in right now, I want you to be able to start to experience some of the joy of your life. And I've talked about this in a past video, that if we're only focusing on the pain and we're only focusing on the I'm going to be happy when I'm over there and life is going to be good only over there when all of this is healed and all of this is fixed, I, I really want to encourage us to find the joys that exist right now, to find the good things, the things that feel good right now. Because A, they're part of the map of how you're going to get there. Right? That future you want to get to, there are seeds of it right here, right now. The stuff that feels good right here, right now, is the stuff to follow that will take you in the direction of that positive future that, we want, that you want, that healing that you want, that transcendence that you want. The stuff that feels good right now, we can't ignore that stuff. And if we're constantly just saying, I'm focusing on all this pain and this is horrible, and it's only going to be good over there, and I'm only lovable over there, but, or I'm only going to let myself be happy over there. We might never get over there. Because a huge part of my journey has been like, yeah, I really had a lot of pain, and I focused on the pain a lot, and, and how I wanted to change it and, and grow it and transform it. But I was also very, very much focused on the things that did feel good, on the things that were working, on the, on the positive things, and maybe a little bit too much sometimes, almost like a delusional level. But that's, those were the seeds that I followed to help me create this life that works for me now. So it's so important that when we're struggling and when we're sad and when we're down and when we're in a lot of pain, that we let ourselves say, okay, but what is good? Not as a way of trying to say that the bad stuff doesn't exist, not in a spiritual bypass way, 
not in a I'm not going to feel my feelings way, but in a both of these things exist. There is some good. There is some seed of brightness somewhere in my life. And that is the path to follow. I don't know what it means. I don't know how it's going to help me. I don't know where it's going to go, right? I had lots of different little seeds in my life, like yoga and Asia and being obsessed with this person online who ended up eventually giving me a job and being obsessed with writing and all these things that I followed those things that did feel good within the shit. And that's how I figured out what I needed, right? That's what I mean by like, what do I need right now? What are the things that feel good to me right now? What are the things that do support me right now? How can I nourish that stuff? Taking care of the things I can take care of. And then finding the joy in what there is, okay? So there's that. And then the next thing is the processing of the really allowing ourselves sometimes. The, the, double, the double of this. The believing you're going to be the one who's going to be able to do it. The finding the joy in the things that exist right now. The seeing the positive. The having that positive identification and that belief. The showing up for, the who, for who and what exists right now with compassion and curiosity. And... If you're going to go through a phase, if you're going through a phase, because I went through this phase too, where eventually I was just like, you know what? Fuck this. I don't want to get better. I don't want to heal. There are some days where everything is just hard, and I'm not grateful, and I don't think that there's a positive side of it, and it doesn't feel worth it. And that is true for me some days. And that was true for me for periods of stretches of time on this path. I wasn't always positive. I didn't always hold myself to hope. And honestly, the closer I got to safety, the closer I got to this more healed place, the more the, the trauma that I had been through and the stuff that I hadn't been able to feel and process at the time because it was too much at the time started to come up. And I'm going to make a whole another video on this of like what happens when we get to safety and why we can sometimes crash and have all this trauma and all this like horrible stuff seemingly come and like envelop us when we get to safety when we thought we'd be happy when we get to this place and then all of a sudden it's like so much worse and we feel like the other shoe's going to drop all the time i'm going to make a whole video on that but allowing ourselves to grieve the pain we've been through to grieve the feeling that maybe we did lose parts of ourselves to grieve what we could have been had we been supported what we could have experienced had we not been damaged the way we were damaged, the way not been traumatized the way we were traumatized, to let ourselves be sad and journal and maybe talk to a therapist if you can or talk to a friend who can hold space for you and, and be resentful and be angry and be full of just, ah, why does life have to suck so bad? We have to give ourselves that, right? If that's what is showing up for you in the moment, Instead of being afraid of that, can we embrace that part of the self that is just sad and tired and resentful and doesn't want to have to? And can we make it safe to feel that way and to hold that part of ourselves with compassion and curiosity, right? And, and can we, like I say, make room for the processing of that? Because I know a lot of the times we can get really afraid of those emotions and that, that it's going to make us do something bad or that we're actually going to give up or whatever. And just what I have found in my own experience is that a lot of the time I just, I, need to f I just need to feel it. I just need to let myself go through it. I just need to face it and be like, yeah, there, there is also these parts of me that are pretty devastated. And instead of running from that pain and running from that sadness and running from that devastation, making it giving it a container to, to express and then of course right if we're feeling like we can't be trusted with our own lives in the moment reach out for help reach out to a stress line don't it is important your life matters and I want you to go and get help so right like this video is not that I'm not a mental health professional I can't tell you what to do if you're suicidal but I can say please do reach out for help your life matters you're worth it and if you're feeling this way, there's nothing wrong with you, and it's not your fault, and you don't need to feel shame, but I want you to get help. Please go get help.
But again, right? For a lot of us, it's not that. We're not suicidal. We're not, we're not saying I want to take my own life or do anything right now. We're just really sad and tired and exhausted and, and resentful and angry and there's all of these feelings and all of this stuff is coming up. And I just want to say that is part of it. When we have faced a lot of pain and trauma and adversity, we're going to be angry and we're going to be sad and we're going to wonder who we could have been and what we could have been had we not been traumatized, had we not been sick, had we not, had we been seen and understood in, in our neurodiversity or whatever it is that was our adversity. We're going to wonder who we would have been had we not been through that sometimes. And let's just make room for that. It's okay. It's okay to have just wishing it hadn't happened. You're allowed to be upset about that. And I just want to put that out there, that we can be both of these things at the same time. We can be the kind of person who's assuming we're going to make it, assuming we're going to have something good, assuming, and acknowledging that this fucking sucks, and we didn't want this. And we probably could have been great even without this level of adversity. We still could have been our awesome selves without this. And maybe we would have been better, because that's what I know for myself. Right? I can't say that if I hadn't been sick, that I wouldn't be doing more. That if I hadn't been traumatized in some of the ways I had been traumatized, that I wouldn't have been greater. Right? There are authors out there and, and self-help gurus and all these things out there that are doing way more than me because they're physically capable more than I am. And that's just a reality. So did this make me my ultimate potential or am I missing some of my ultimate potential because of some of the things that I went through? I don't know. Right? So I would rather be realistic with myself. So like I say, on the days when I'm super down, on the days when I'm over it, on the days when it's just like this is too much and I wish this had never happened and I'm angry, days, weeks, months sometimes, I let myself go there. I make room for those emotions because it's real and it sucks and adversity and the things that we've been through and the ways that we've been hurt and harmed we deserve to be validated and seen in that and not told well you have to make something positive out of it out of it right now no you don't you don't have to and ultimately i think this is the biggest thing that i tell myself i don't ever have to make something positive out of it if i don't want to ultimately this is my life Ultimately, this is your life. You do not owe anyone an after story. You do not owe anyone making something good out of what you've been through. You do not have to find the positive. You do not have to make it something good for other people. You don't have to make yourself good for the people around you. You don't have to heal. There is no rule that says you have to. It's just your life. So what would you like to do with it? And that's what I ultimately come to. So when I'm really sad and I'm really down and I'm not okay, it's my life, I'm allowed. And then that's usually the like, okay, well, what are you gonna do, <laughs> right? I let myself feel it, I let myself be upset, I let myself be angry, I let myself doubt, I let myself get scared that I'm not gonna be able to heal fully and that this is gonna take me out and that I, I'm delusional and all of these things. And then, eventually I get to a place where I'm like, okay, so now what do you want to do? Because you're still alive, you're not going to kill yourself, because I, right? Most of us come to that place. So what do I want to do? And I make it totally okay that on, sometimes I'm like, fuck it, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to become great. I'm not going to keep going. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I give myself complete permission to do that if I want to. And then usually... I get a little stronger, I get some rest, I get some sleep, I get something, and then it's like, okay, well, like I say, I'm still here, so let's see. Let's see what I can do. Let's see what I can become. Let's take another step. Let's just assume it's going to get better, because like now I have all this evidence that everything has gotten better. For a long time, I didn't have evidence that things could get better in my own life, but I looked to other people who told me that their lives got better. And I said, okay, well, if they can do it, if they figured it out, if they can get better, I can too. So let's just see. Let's assume I'm the kind of person who can. Let's, um, let's assume that this is the kind of adversity that can be made into something great. 
and I'm just going to go for it. Because it's my life, and ultimately, I, I want to know. Right? And I, I had this feeling of spiritual guidance my whole life. I had a feeling of connection. I had all that that I couldn't explain, that I couldn't run from, even when I wanted to sometimes. And so I just said, fine, okay, this is what it is, and I'm going to do it. But also, like I say, learning to love myself and accept myself and nourish myself for where I actually was. So learning how to not just completely be dissociated from the pain that I was in and also the pleasure of my life, like so focused on the future. And I mean, there are times and places where we have to be. So I don't want to tell anyone that you have to be anything at any given moment. But just one step at a time. If you love yourself safe, get curious about yourself right here, right now. How can you support you? How can you show up for you? And ultimately, if you'd like, how can you just assume you are the kind of person who's going to be able to take your adversity and make it something great? Just live as though it's true. And even and if it isn't, you will go to your grave having lived as though it was true. And you're probably going to have a much better life experience, even if it's going to get cut short, than if you were living as though it wasn't true. Like, that's what I just decided for myself. That I would rather live as though it's going to be true and having hope and focusing on the positive things and allowing myself to have joyful experiences now than continuing to live for a future that I didn't know was even going to... I didn't really know was going to happen. Or living as though my life was already over when it wasn't. Because I was still here. So that that's my message. We can turn this planet closer and closer to a place where more and more people have access so more and more of us are going to be able to reach our potential despite what we've been through i believe we have that power and second thing you are worthy of love and respect and kindness right here right now so how can you show up for the you that exists with compassion and curiosity right now every single day over and over and over again that's how you're going to get to anywhere you're going to go third thing Assume you are the kind of person that can take your trauma and make it something good. Assume you are the kind of person that's going to heal. Assume, assume that it is possible for you, one little step at a time. Then again, start to really focus on the things that already feel good right now, that are working right now. Keep walking as though it's possible. You can find the answers. You're going to figure it out. Keep being on your own side. And then on the days when you're down and you don't have what it takes and you're not happy and you're not positive, make room for it. You're allowed to feel that way. You're allowed to have regret and anger and, and all of these things. But when it starts to turn into shame and guilt and you're beating yourself up and fear, 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 look under that. Is there more under those emotions? Is it really that you're angry or sad or resentful or wishing that things had been a different way? Go a little deeper under the guilt and the shame and the fear. There's probably more. And then, like I say, at the end of the day, it's your life. You get to live it. No one can tell you what the right thing to do is. No one can tell you what the wrong thing to do is. No one can tell you that your life isn't a magical story that has a happy ending. So you may as well live as though it does. Support yourself. Be kind to yourself. Live as though you matter. Your life matters right here, right now. And then the more you do that, we're going to be able to live as though all lives matter. And we're going to be able to be more supportive of, of making this world a more equitable place for all of us. The more you develop that compassion and empathy for yourself, the more you're going to have it for everyone else. And I believe that that's how we become people who are actively involved in making this world better for all of us in the ways that we can be. Okay? So just one little step at a time. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you got some tools out of it. And that is that. I will see you next week for another video. And until then, I love you so much. Your life matters now. Your life matters now. Your life matters now. You matter. Period. End of story. Okay? Okay. I'll see you next week.